I asked for strength. And God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom. And God gave me problems to solve. I asked for courage. And God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for love. And God gave me troubled people to help. My prayers were answered. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just got to quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're going to see exactly why it went that way. And you're going to be okay with it. But quit tripping during the process. What do you worry about most in life? Is it your health? Your marriage? Your children? Maybe you worry most about what other people think about you. Maybe it's because you're worried because you don't know what God thinks about you and you're concerned about that. Maybe it's your finances. What is it that you worry about most? Do you know why you worry? You see, there's one thing to be concerned about things, to have a genuine sense of responsibility, to be concerned about things, things that need to be corrected. But worry is something more than that. And what I want to talk about in this message is this. Not some pie-in-the-sky kind of possibility. I want to talk about a legitimate, genuine, real, practical, effective way to overcome worry in your life. You do not have to worry. It is not the will of God. It is not the plan of God. You say, but you don't know my circumstances. I know that God knows them. And because he does know them, he would not say, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry, if he intended for us to worry. Worry is a trust issue. You worry because you don't trust that God is in control of your situation. You worry that he will fail you in your time of need. Trust comes when you place your confidence in someone who knows better than you. You trust God because you believe he knows everything about your situation and will somehow make everything work out for your good, even when it doesn't look good at all. Trusting God with your life is the cure for worry. The winds of tragedy have crushed your dreams. The waves of sorrow and suffering have drowned your hopes about your future. You are deeply concerned about the direction America is going in that their rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are being destroyed. And you're right, we are going in the wrong direction. Today, from the pages of God's Word, I'm going to bring you the message of experiencing a new beginning in your life if you're willing to stop being pushed by your problems and start being led by your dreams. You can experience a new beginning in your marriage, in your business, that will bring a financial breakthrough in your tomorrows. There's no problem that God can't solve. No problem. He can, he can solve any problem. Now, sometimes, just to be honest, we all need to be honest with ourselves if we want to get help. Sometimes, especially let's take like finances, you know, it, there's probably just a tremendous amount of pressure to not ever have enough money. But a lot of that we create ourselves by overspending. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you've made a big enough mess yourself, it might take you a little while longer to get out of it because if God just comes and rescues us every time we act foolish, then we won't learn anything. And Dave and I had some very lean years financially, but I will tell you that not once were we not able to pay a bill. So I do believe that God will always meet your need. He may not meet all your wants right away, but he will your needs. In the Bible, what he thinks about worry. And that's the first verse, verse six, the first part of the first verse, verse six, Philippians four, it says this, never worry about anything. Now circle never and circle anything. Never worry about anything. 
question. Is there any wiggle room in that verse? No. Is there any exception? No. Uh, is there any exemption? No. Is there any reason where God says, it's okay to worry in this circumstance? No. Never worry about anything. That's about as big a blanket statement as you can make. He says, in no circum... Well, what about... No, never worry about anything. But what about... No, never worry about anything. But what about... No, never worry about anything. Now, now Jesus thought worry was such an important topic that he spent a major section of his most famous sermons called the Sermon on the Mount talking about worry. And in that Sermon on the Mount, he gives us the four reasons you should never worry about anything. Jesus says about worry, worry is unreasonable. It's illogical, it is unreasonable, it doesn't make sense. Oh, somebody, I try, I'm trying to make it plain. I've never taken my car to the dealership just so they can look at what they already built. Every time I take it there, it's because something's wrong and I need them to fix it. When you go to God, he does not need to see who you are. He made you. You're going to God because something ain't working and something ain't right and I need help. Can you fix it? And I promise y'all, Jeremiah 29, 11, he's so ready to fix it because he's so ready for you to get back on the road. Hey man, I'm gonna say that one more time. God is so ready to fix you because he wants you to get back on the road and he wants you to perform the way you were designed to perform. So when I picked up my Cadillac, I'll be real with you, I put it on the freeway and gunned it to see if it's all right. <laughs> I'm like, let's see, I wanna see if it, you know what I'm saying? I wanna see if I hear some noise again. I wanna see if the pickup, I wanna see if it do what it's supposed to do. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? And so Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says, for I know, not I guess, I think, I know the plans that I have for you. So I want you to do me a favor with the piece of paper you have. I want you to, you go into the dealer right now. And I want you to talk to the, I want you to talk to your maker. And I want you to say, this is where I think I need the move, the needle to be moved. Amen. Yeah, maybe that may not be it, but start with what you think it is. Amen. I don't know cars, but I'm like, Jamie was like, what's up? He was like, I don't know, bro, but it's knocking. He feel me? I don't know. And, but I also know it can't be what I think it is because it's got oil in it and I changed the oil. Hey Amen. It can't be that. Hey Amen. So whatever it is, it's on them. It's not on me. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that you come into this world with some stuff and God already know what you come with and he going to fix it. Hey Amen. And if he does not fix it, Paul, Paul said three times he came to the Lord and told the Lord to remove it. And God said, I'm not removing it. We're going to let you hold on to it because I need to keep you close to me and that's going to keep you coming close to me. God never consults your past to determine your future. Jesus looked at a career criminal on the cross and said, this day you will be, be with me in paradise. He had an awful, hideous, criminal past. But the moment he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom, that was sufficient and that gained him entrance into the kingdom of God. Do you feel alone? Do you feel life has lost its meaning? Go where you are celebrated instead of, instead of where you're tolerated. Think about that. Never spend more time on a critic than you would give to a friend. I've seen people who have a sincere heart wear themselves out trying to win the friendship of a critic. If they don't like you, leave them alone. Go find somebody that does like you. You are a divine creation. You are royalty. Act like it. You're never going to reach the palace talking like a peasant. You are a child of God. You are a royal ambassador of the kingdom of God. Stop worrying. Be happy. Live in the sunshine of God's joy. You are somebody right now. We're commanded by Jesus Christ not to worry. Five times Jesus says in Matthew 6, take no thought, do not be anxious. God has given us an owner's manual of the soul. In this owner's manual, it says we were designed and made by the architect of heaven to function without worry. Life without tension, life without turmoil, life without Tylenol, life without stress and 
strife. Life that is filled with the power, power over the world, the flesh and the devil. Life that is carefree, life that is happy, life that is joyous. How? By casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. The Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For he is God Almighty. He is an ever-present friend in the time of trouble. He's greater than the crisis that you're in. He's greater than the mountains that you're climbing. He's greater than the giants that seem unbeatable. He's greater than the greatest. He's higher than the highest. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. He's the God of all hope. He is the Prince of Peace. He is our sword. He is our shield. He is our buckler. He is our high tower. He is our all in all. The victory is ours through Christ the Lord.